so good afternoon, everyone. It's really great to be here. Um, I'm going to ask you, I don't have any slides. I'm just going to ask you to sit back and, and listen to something that I care deeply about, um, this idea of human social responsibility, and give you a little perspective of something that I'm seeing happening as a real shift in the workplace, particularly, but not limited to the millennial generation. But it's really important um, as we think about all these really complex and difficult issues that, that we're facing, how we actually make a connection to these people that are around us every day. So for the past 25 years, I have passionately built a career in corporate social responsibility. But I believe that by the time I retire, what I do for a living will be outdated, archived, and, and done. Um, and that is because I believe that corporate social responsibility is already on its way to being replaced by what I call human social responsibility. And I absolutely love that I see a few people actually nodding to this. So, amen. So, um, so you might be asking whether I have told my boss this yet. So, you know, here I am doing everything I can to scale corporate social responsibility at the company where I work, and I'm up here telling you that my profession is going to be a goner. And the, the answer is yes, I have told my boss, and he agrees. So let me give you a little bit of context. I run corporate social responsibility for a technology company that powers the business of philanthropy which means that I work in a setting every day that is all about giving back, both through what we do as a business and what we care about as people. You might think that building a program like this has been a lot of fun, and it actually has, but it also hasn't been easy. And I say that because traditionally, corporate social responsibility has been for the big guys, the Fortune 500 companies with the capacity to invest in people and programs. But there are a lot of companies out there that aren't big. Does that mean that they're not interested in doing good? Of course not. So I've come to learn that the focus on corporate, which was once, once a vanguard idea, is actually kind of a problem. So why do I think this? Two reasons. First, the focus on corporate is limiting. Did you know that more than 70% of all people who work in business work for small to mid-sized businesses? That's in America. They work for concerns that are anything but corporate. So when you have a professional area, and this might seem a little bit picky, but when you have something that at its very heart is focused on corporate, you're leaving a lot of people without a seat at the table. You're putting up barriers through the very language that you use that says this is not for you. So I have an important confession to make. I have a fundamental belief in my life that good is for everyone. It is for my 17-year-old son, it's for my 82-year-old father. It is for cities, nonprofits, businesses, governments. It is for all of us. And we need to stop thinking that only certain kinds of organizations are capable of being wired for good. So I graduated from college in what I like to call the Gordon Gecko greed is good era. Anyone who has seen the movie Wall Street in, from the 1980s would, would know what I'm talking about. But basically, it's this idea that when I graduated, if you wanted to make money you went into business. And if you wanted to make a difference, you went to work for a nonprofit or maybe you got an MPA. But the world has changed. My son Sam headed to college last year knowing that he had so many options, so many paths for how he was gonna make his mark as a global citizen. That makes me very happy and optimistic about the world. So I said I had two reasons why the focus on corporate was limiting. And the second one is that it reinforces this image of corporations as faceless monoliths. To me, people are at the heart of every organization, no matter what it does. We as human beings bring the oxygen and life to every purpose and vision of every organization. We provide the wits that gets everything done. So... We, as humans, bring our whole selves to work 
every day. People bring their whole selves with them. When I step out of my Prius in the morning and I walk up the walkway and into the lobby, I do that as a complete person, as a mother who sent a son off to college, as a daughter who recently lost a mother, as a nonprofit board member, as a member of a community in Charleston, South Carolina, that is still struggling to deal with a racial hate crime. And yes, as a professional, my colleagues are the same. We each sign our own human contracts with the world. We bring who we are and what we believe in to work every day. These human contracts are written in indelible ink, and they are interwoven in our daily DNA, and they don't stay in the car, in the glove compartment, with our registration and proof of insurance. They come into the building with us. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because we, as people who deeply care about making a difference in the world, should be focused on the transformative impact of the individual. If we really do this right, we have the opportunity not only to accomplish our own goals, but also to strengthen the broader social economy. So how do you start doing this? You start by accepting that human social responsibility is actually an organizational framework that you can adopt. It's a framework that allows you to take these dizzying array of passions that people have around you and change them from being something difficult to be managed to a powerful force to be leveraged. So how do you actually do that? To me, it is about creating a balance between your people and your community. Know what your people care about. Put your people at the center. This is really a recipe with three simple ingredients. Know what they care about, put them at the center of your giving, and empower them as agents of good. Now, I'm not saying that you have to forget what your organization cares about and its vision and mission, but don't make the mistake of ignoring theirs because their social good story is your social good story. You have to have the courage to go on a journey together and to allow them to actually teach you, which is different in the corporate world. Know what your community cares about. Put it at the center. Know what it values. Put it at the center of your work and partner in doing good. And when you get this right, this marriage of people and community, your brand actually fits right in the center. The more you know about both sides, the more you can actually align your goals. So, you know, where from here? You know, when you align your goals and your brand is at the center, you actually become more real and you become more relevant. So I'm going to close just by saying that we each have a choice, a choice about how we want to walk through life, about how we want to lead the organizations that we're involved with. And this is really my call to leadership, that if giving and good truly is for everyone, then we have to keep that human component central. We can't forget about it. And so I ask you not only to understand this, but to really actively embrace it, to understand those human contracts and to value them, that your people sign, the people around you sign, and to help take their collective daily DNA and move it forward so that we all do more good. Thank you. Thank you.